you process tends to get a little uh, inbred. Um, I've worked with NCASE predominantly over the years, but have started switching over to FTK, have done some work with Paraben, but phone forensics is just so complicated when you're dealing with multinational that we just kind of don't worry about it unless we, and if we do, we just outsource. And uh, you can find me on Twitter, I'm Paranoic Pro. So, first section of this, um, if this were Forensics 101, first question is, are you really sure you want to do this? Um, probably the biggest thing that hit early on when you're doing internal investigations is that you run into porn cases. And chances are, thanks to Rule 34, that it's not going to be the porn you want to look at. Um, there's all sorts of stuff out there. People will look at it from work computer, and it's not really what you want to see. So uh, if porn bothers you, uh, particularly if really, really weird porn bothers you, this might not be the career for you. Another problem with doing internal forensics is that there's a decent chance that you're going to investigate people you know. Um, I've had to investigate people who worked in my building. I've had to work investigate uh, relatives, unfortunately. And um, it can make you very unpopular uh, once people realize that you're the one who's involved in these things, uh, people getting fired and whatnot. So again, it's one of those things that you really need to think about when you're doing the internal forensics uh, path. Uh, next section, planning ahead. Uh, which is another very important thing to do. And this is something that I was told early on in my career, and I've been very fortunate that I've been let go with it. Uh, whenever you're buying equipment or software, buy the best one that you can afford and do it as often as your boss will let you. Uh, this is one of those areas where having good equipment and good software will make a difference in how fast you can get your cases done. And if you've got a boss that is willing to let you buy stuff, go for it chances are it won't get wasted. The flip side of that is don't wait until it's broke to fix it. Um, if you wait until something stops working, chances are it's going to stop working in the middle of one of your investigations where you've got a time-sensitive deadline. Um, unfortunately, you know the most common one that I run into is my evidence disk will fill up on the first day of my case, and I'll have another two or three hard drives that I have to look at. So I have to hop in the car and run over to Best Buy and pick up another hard drive. Um, keep an eye on your rig. Make sure that you've got stuff ready. Make sure that you understand when you're getting close to your limits so that you can get stuff on order, because uh, sometimes doing standard processes uh, can be a problem. This is something that I wish I would have been able to do over the years. Um, when you're doing cases, when you're doing investigations, it helps to be able to focus on the investigation you're working on. Um, my job was forensics when forensics events came up, but I had you know eight or ten other things that I was working on, and it, you can get sidetracked very easily, particularly when your forensics area is in the same basic areas where all your your coworkers are. Uh, you can get pulled off on other things, and it makes it really hard to concentrate on the case at hand. For internal forensics, and I suppose in other areas, I haven't ever worked outside of the internal area, so I don't know for sure, but my service is something that I provide to a variety of other organizations. I don't do the actual investigations. They come to me. They say, here, we have this case. We want you to look at this drive and see if you can find any evidence of X, Y, and Z. So training the investigators is very important. Um, let me go back to that previous one because there's some other stuff. Uh, in the training side, something that's that I found has been very useful is maybe once a year, uh, more often if you have more frequent turnover, sit down with the investigators groups and talk about you know what can and can't your software do. You know what are your capabilities? What information do you need to know from them in order to be able to do your job effectively? Uh, I can't tell you how many times I've had an investigator come to me, hand a hard drive, and I say, what do you want me to find? And they'll say, well, just find evidence of something wrong. And that 
is a rabbit hole that you really don't want to be going down. If you can get your investigators trained on that so that they can come to you and say, we know that this guy was involved in downloading inappropriate images. We believe he was on site on this day. And we need to find some evidence that he actually did it from work. It makes your job so much easier. Oh yeah, between 2009 and now, I've had uh, one of the disadvantages of the space that I work in is that when we do e-discovery stuff, the cases can go on for six, seven years sometimes. And so they'll be asking me for, you know, uh, find me some evidence that this guy deleted this file off his computer back in 2002. Well, he's had two upgrades since then, so there's no chance that I'll be able to figure it out. Um, just because your lab machine doesn't have the internet doesn't mean you shouldn't. Uh, I can't, I mean, there have been so many times where I've had the rig on one uh, keyboard and an internet connected machine and being able to look up, you know, not just wonderful resources like the, the various folks who attend these uh, DFIR sessions uh, produce, but also, you know, the odd case where you'll get something where you've got somebody doing a foreign language and being able to look up you know, words in a foreign language to figure out what's going on can help if you don't know what that language is. Process is key. Um, make sure that you know what your process is. Make sure that you document what your process is and follow it religiously. Uh, anytime you deviate from what you say your process is, it opens up the opposing counsel to be able to come in and tear you to shreds and introduce doubt because you didn't do what you said you always did. Um, the second bullet is something that has bit me a couple of times. Uh, when you're doing a case, use the software that you're used to. Uh, I have taken and said, oh, this it looks like it would be a wonderful new tool to be able to use and brought it in in a new case and then spent three days trying to figure out either how to get it running in the first place or what all of the data that it spits back at me means once I, it finishes running. And that's related to the next bullet. Uh, just because you get an answer out of your end case or your FTK, go through and verify that the answer that you got is means what you think it means and that you can do it in a repeatable way. Uh, this is something that when you're going through cases, having both end case and FTK can be useful because then you can run through both tools and verify that you can find the same artifact using different methodologies and that helps to ensure that you're not you know, chasing ghosts. This goes back, the next bullet goes back to uh, what I was talking about earlier with filling up the uh, the evidence drives, bringing data into the forensics lab is very easy to do, but you need to understand what the process is that you're going to use to get rid of it when you're done. How do you know that a case is over? How do you know that it's really over in your past statute of limitations or that all of these settlements have washed out and everybody's happy and you can actually get rid of the data? Um, how do you handle tracking down all of those questions when the investigator on the case and the lawyer on the case no longer is with the company? Uh, being able to figure all of that stuff out and track down to make sure that you can get rid of something is very useful. Otherwise, you're going to end up with a data nightmare. And the last bullet is one that uh, is particularly important to me because I have crappy handwriting. If you take notes, you definitely need to take notes. And if you're doing it with pen and paper, make sure that once you've written it down, you can actually understand what it was that you wrote. I've got pages and pages of really, really important looking notes that I can't decipher anymore. And of course, as everybody knows, Murphy was an optimist. If something's going to go wrong, pretty much guaranteed it will. Um, there have been a number of cases that I've worked on, and in particular, a couple of cases recently where you know you'll go in and you'll run your standard process through on processing a drive, and nothing comes back. Um, one of the uh, one of the cases that I worked recently, we just got one of our first cases in that was doing Windows Seven. I went in, I did my standard practice that I'd always done on all the other workstations that I had. I looked for the recent uh, folder. There's a recent folder shown there in end case, but there was nothing in it. And I'm like, that's weird. 
I wonder, in that particular case, the user had downloaded CCleaner, and so I suspected, oh, he's gone through and he, he ran CCleaner and it deleted all the recent. Well, then I got the next case in, it was a Windows 7 box, and lo and behold, there's no recent in there either. So now I'm thinking, okay, something's definitely not right here, and I go back through and lo and behold, Microsoft moved the recent, uh, and so now there's jump lists and they're in different places. So, uh, yeah, just because you have a standard process doesn't mean that it's always going to work. Oh, yes. If you've got the option of using the super powerful forensics rig or a laptop, go with the super powerful forensics rig, even if it's not working properly. You know, when you have a slightly slower hard drive, those things are optimized for, in, for I.O. and it can take days to do even a simple acquisition if you've got a laptop with a crappy I.O. chain. Uh, and so, Again, back to that, uh, making sure your stuff works. But even if it's not working exactly the way you'd prefer, it can still be faster than doing it on a laptop. And then for, in particular, for the corporate environment, uh, understand what your supply chain looks like. Understand how to go and order equipment through the normal path. And then understand when the normal path simply isn't going to work for you. Uh, I went through the normal path to get a new hard drive for a create case that had just showed up that was time sensitive and so I sent in the request through the hardware request form and said I need a brand new uh, eSATA hard drive that needs to be one terabyte. Week and a half goes by, they finally send me the hard drive and it's a USB 3 drive which none of my devices have USB 3 on it so it was a complete waste of time. I ended up having to run out to Best Buy and pick up the drive that I actually wanted. So. Know your normal chain, know your emergency path, and know when to use each one. Uh, details definitely matter in forensics. And you know, they, you sort of cover this in the Forensics 101 type classes, but it really does matter. Uh, Windows XP versus Windows 7, it's important. Which version of Microsoft Office, it can be important. Uh, making sure that you document all of the steps that you go through. Uh, when you come down to the end of the case, and if it gets to be one of those really tricky technical things, um, being able to make sure that you followed the path and have the details down can make the difference with successful and unsuccessful. Uh, volume, shadow, volume shadow copies, something that I learned through this forum, as a matter of fact. I was looking at it and it's like, I've got a case that those would be perfect for. And I go out and I start looking for them. And then I discovered that our wonderful group policy administrators had turned off volume shadow copies because they thought they took too much space. So it would have been a wonderful, wonderful thing to have, but they deliberately turned them off on me. Um, the, the old phrase, the absence of an artifact may be an artifact itself. But again, this goes back to that I was looking for uh, recent files and they were not there. When you start seeing them in multiple places, it may be that you're just looking in the wrong place. And I think this is probably one of the most important ones. And I think one of the ones that everybody here has really figured out, we are not alone here. Uh, communities like this are fantastic resources. Uh, don't be so uncomfortable that if you get the opportunity to come in and talk, even for a short one like this, Make friends, make use of them, uh, talk to people in the community, because you know the hackers are doing this. And if we don't share information amongst ourselves, we don't stand a chance. And that is my last slide. <laughs>